Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to this The Legends podcast with me, Sarah Faruya from Sarah Faruya Coaching. I believe there are many, many ways to lead a life and that everybody has stories. And do you believe in fairy tales? Because I don't. There's always that end piece when they say, and they all lived happily ever after. But I'm interested in what the fuck happens next with people as well. I'm also interested in what happened in fairy tales as well. And so today I am so thrilled to welcome back the beautiful, talented, incredible, original May Sawada. Hi, May. Hi. <laughs> so this is part of my mini series, What the F Happened Next. I'm so interested to know what happened to people over the last two years and what how COVID was for them and what they did and, and what things were on the back burner. You may remember that last time I spoke to Lindsay, who is May's mom, actually, and she talked about the changes she'd made in her yoga studio and all these other changes that happened. But also we threw in a teaser for what happened next for May. Uh, after she moved out of the home. So first of all, about May. May is uh, an elite athlete. She is a circus performer and she is a highly skilled aerial dance performer. Um, she started her aerial dance journey with the Aerial Dance Project, uh, Aerial Art Dance Project nine years ago, where she continued to study and study and study up there. Um, in Tokyo and devoted her life to her body and to being physical and to being the very best performer she could with view of becoming a Cirque du Soleil style performer or performing in the Cirque du Soleil. So we'll be talking about that a little later. May dropped out of ordinary high school when she was 15 and she went to an external high school in order that she could devote herself completely to her elite body movement motivations. I think that's incredible. And her mum was behind her every single step of the way. She graduated school at 15 and then at 16, she graduated with her qualification that would allow her to get into college. But instead of going on to do more college work, she devoted herself full time to her physical trainings. Um, she got into something called calisthenics that I'm sure she's gonna tell us about later. And she also got herself a certificate. And this is very, very smart for people who are in physical, um, uh, involved in physical activities as their lifestyle. She also got herself qualified in a trade, in an actual skill that she can earn money from in addition to her amazing body work. So May, welcome once more to Hi. tell us what the fuck happened next, my dear legend. But my first question is this, tell me a story from the last year or so. We, we spoke one year ago in uh, September, 2020. So tell okay. me a story that's had an impact on you. So basically, we moved houses because we were re rebuilding our house at that time. And I tried to audition for the National Circus School in Canada, Montreal. Unfortunately, I couldn't get in because of COVID and they weren't accepting foreign students. So I trained more. I mean, like, focus more in calisthenics and obviously my aerial training. And, yeah, basically that's about it, I think. I've been training ever since. Wow. So you wanted to go to the, Can the Canadian Circus, what's it called, the Canadian? Canadian uh, National Circus School in Canada. The National Circus School in Canada, but unfortunately they weren't letting people in. So you you didn't give up. You you stayed in Japan and you got into something called calisthenics. Mm -hmm. Tell us so, about that. What's this and how did you get into it? Calisthenics is like basically street workout, and street workout is where you have these bars and then you kind of pull yourself up or do some tricks on it or basically just train without using any weights. Mm -hmm. 
and you just train with your body weight Mm -hmm. and yeah I got into that but my friend when I first started it my friend offered me to like train with them and take some cool videos and that's how I got into calisthenics Mm -hmm. so I calisthenics but yeah that's how I kind of got into it and trained every day Mm -hmm. So I follow you on Instagram. Um, your your name on Instagram is what? Sorry, uh, underbar me or the other way around? I can't remember. Yeah, I but... think it's Cirque. Uh, Under... uh, the Cirque, as in the French way to say that, underscore me. Okay. Right. So we'll we'll link to that down here. So I've okay. seen all this calisthenics, and I also now follow your boyfriend, <laughs> and um, it's it's incredible so it's so people are using their body weight to train but what i'm what she means by that is somebody may be holding on there may be a bar in front Mm -hmm. of them and their entire body weight is out uh horizontal behind them it's it's really quite something and may was training next to these guys so how many guys are there involved in this group so you're basically the only girl in this group is that right um so there's a couple of girls that join in Mm -hmm. and so the finder of our group he's called Sean he made this young ninja group it's called the young ninja the group amazing (laughs) and he is in California I think Mm -hmm. or Miami or I don't know but he's in America right now Mm -hmm. and he has this like cool phone thing where you like where you put your phone in and then if you move it the video won't like blur Mm -hmm. like go in turns and like film ourselves and he kind of makes these cool instagram videos and there is like i think six guys seven guys that are like involved in the group and there's a couple of other groups that are like um, doing calisthenics and like uh, showing Japan how they can like, I don't know how you say this, um, like showing the world cal- what calisthenics is. Yeah. And it's not actually a group, it's, it's kind of like a get together. Yeah. And we train with like f- four guys and the only girl, me, mm-hmm. or that some other girls come, but it's normally just me. Yes. We train at the beach or some random park or, yeah, we, we kind of train everywhere. You don't really need any equipment, you just need the bars, like, a pull-up bar so yeah that's really fun what I love about this May is that it's it's very democratic in a way because you don't need a gym you don't need a gym membership most countries certainly Japan has these playgrounds with bars everywhere like monkey bars or any kind of bars or even just those kind of bars that stop you from going into a car park or anything railings it kind of reminds me of skateboarding in that way in that all you need is just the street and the Mm -hmm. concrete it turns it turns the whole world into a playground right Mm -hmm. definitely how do you keep up with these guys I mean I've seen the stuff you do together and I've seen that you can do a lot of these moves they make how do you how what does it take to to be that strong uh a lot of dedication and discipline I think like Mm -hmm. if you don't like if you just want to train you could like go to the gym or something but if you like have to do it by yourself you can't really do it like on your own because you need the motivation or like someone to talk to like pulling yourself up because that's really hard and you have to keep on continuing like doing that so you need a good support group Mm -hmm. What was a move that you sucked at at first and then mastered that you're proud of? Pull-ups and push-ups. 
I couldn't even do one pull up and one push up. Yeah. But now I actually do ten pull ups and ten push ups. More probably more push ups than pull ups, but I'm able to do a lot of stuff now because of my friends mm. helping me. Superb. So as you mentioned, about a year ago, you started doing a rebuild on your uh, family home, right? Mm. How was that for you? So I am kind of a neat freak. So like, if nothing is like tidy, I get kind of stressed out. Yeah. So moving in and moving out, there was some crying happening because the house <laughs> so dirty and there was a lot of boxes but very like fun and new and it was a good experience because I'd never moved houses before so that was well fun mm -hmm. the new house is just amazing what did you learn from that process to accept new things I think like new like beginnings to accept new beginnings yeah like so I don't really like change because okay. it kind of me out and I think a lot and like overthink too much sometimes but that kind of like helped that process because you just had to get through it you had to get through seeing the only home you've ever known being demolished how did that feel for you it was exciting actually how was it like yes the old house was nice but the new house is nicer because it's clean everything's new it's just exciting mm -hmm. moved in or moved out before so yeah it's how really fun wonderful I know your mum's been crying in your bedroom quite a lot <laughs> I did not know that <laughs> only for the first three days after you left <laughs> it's quite normal I can remember my mum crying into the uh crying into all my frying pans on the floor when I left to go to university I walked into the room to check everything was there and she was like oh. <laughs> um so May, speaking of new beginnings, where are what's happening? Where are you now? What happened next? I am in Las Vegas. Vegas, Nevada. baby! Vegas, baby! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I am training at the Circus Center, which is a big, big, big studio in... Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I am learning new stuff. Mm -hmm. For example, that is like extreme stretching. And extreme stretching. Learning... What what's involved in extreme stretching? How do I explain this? If you look at my Instagram, you would probably know. But some um, some lady is pushing my chin to the ground but not actually to the ground to my bum if that makes sense I don't know how to explain this like so you kind of flipped over like a pretzel yeah mm -hmm. and she's pushing your she's you're Push stretching as much as you can because you're already very flexible right mm -hmm. and what's she doing is she pushing you beyond your edge or to your edge yeah. how does that feel to you tell me more about this when I just started like aerial silks, I was really like flexible and I had no strength whatsoever. So it's kind of easier for me to stretch than putting more muscle on me. Mm -hmm. So it's actually kind of nice to stretch that much because I need more strength than stretching. I see. But at the same time I do have to do um like muscle training because if I don't do that I cannot climb up the tissue which is the silks um so yeah it's kind of a tricky balance to keep but mm -hmm. I am trying to like get more flexible and try to make an act on the floor just the floor not with the tissue oh. 
so yeah that's really fun I'm really enjoying myself because I do love stretching and I know I am flexible so mm -hmm. I would like to know my limit and you know make an act if possible make an act so tell us more about that so you do that on the silks but now you're doing it just on the floor say more um it's really different to the silks because i've been doing that for nine years mm -hmm. but on the floor you kind of have to dance as well ah. and i do not have like that many dance experiences so like that's kind of a new thing for me and I'm like trying to dance but yeah that's not really going well <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so when you say make an act you're talking about kind of choreography you actually yeah. have to do kind of choreography in addition to stretching so yeah. is that the kind of thing we'd see in the Cirque du Soleil? So if there's like, there's people climbing the silks, there's people on the floor with their legs over by their ears and doing all this other wild stuff on the floor, that's what you're now building your uh, exp expertise in, is it? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I am learning new stuff on the silks so I can do more tricks and more new, like drops and, you know, just like showing my, I would say feelings on the silks because the I think I am not really good at talking to like a big audience mm -hmm. that's why in a way dancing on the silks because I don't know how to speak in front of people because uh -huh. I'm really nervous <laughs> but yeah if I'm doing like circus stuff I feel free to express myself so that's like uh, stress reliever in a way I hadn't thought of it like that that just gave me goosebumps FBGs thinking about like showing your feelings on the silks so it's not only a physical thing it's not only about stretching it's not only about technical skill it's also about you doing what like expressing yourself tell me more um whenever I'm feeling like I don't know, for example, angry or sad or happy, that would show on my silks what I'm doing then. Mm -hmm. So when I'm like feeling really happy, the tissue would move around and like I would do crazy drops and like crazy overstretched poses. But if I'm kind of like angry, it would like look really rough in some way yeah so whenever I'm feeling an emotion that would show on the silks amazing I haven't thought about that and how about the floor work how is that coming through in the floor work so for now I'm just kind of learning how to stretch my body without screaming in pain <laughs> <laughs> I think that would show as well because that's kind of the same thing in a way it's just without the tissue or you know with the tissue it's expressing myself I think yeah amazing and is there any other new things that you're doing what movement wise here so you're learning the more of the floor work you're learning to express yourself more through the silks what else is new for you there um so I'm doing a handstand class as well mm -hmm. The guy that is teaching me is an amazing hand balancer. He was in Cirque du Soleil. Uh -huh. And I love how he teaches because he's kind of strict, but I love that. And I think I'm like getting stronger and stronger each week. And yeah, I'm really enjoying myself. How do you make that transition from sucking at something to like enjoy how do you allow yourself to enjoy that because so many people just hate it that sucking piece at the beginning yeah. I mean <laughs> um I don't know I kind of enjoy the process because oh. I like I know when I practice and practice and practice I would get something out of it 
if because I am not the person that just quits I kind of keep going until I get something done Mm -hmm. and I just kind of like how um, I just kind of like hmm, seeing myself grow Mm -hmm. in the for example I'm posting oh almost every day on my Instagram so Mm -hmm. when I back on my profile I would see how much I've like um improved yeah yeah so that's kind of fun as well love that and especially in that I mean for anybody who's listening I would highly recommend you go and have a look at May's um Instagram because it's really incredible and she's very humble in what she shares as well like she's got this like woman like just literally standing on there pushing her further it's like it's really remarkable but you know it's very obvious to see the progress in in physical work as well right because like you you're either doing it or you're not like an inch is very easy to see or two centimeters three centimeters difference is really easy to see so you can see that progress you can enjoy that progress and so that's the thing. So you enjoy that and you don't yeah. like quitting. You like keep keeping going and making sure that you complete that thing, right? Yeah, I definitely do not quit until I get something that I want. Like, so for example, if I can't get a trick on the silks, I would just practice that for three hours until I get that. Just sucking um, at it over and over and over again. Wow. That's, so, that's, that's just such great. Like, I'm really thinking about this now because I've just had my medical health check and been told I'm obese. And so <laughs> I need to, I need to like, I need to lose some kilograms. Right. So it's the same thing. It's ex- exactly the same thing. Like you, 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 you can see the progress, right. But I yeah. hate sucking at things. <laughs> So this is just perfect for me because I realized that actually I just need to keep doing and doing and doing and doing and doing and doing and being rubbish at it until I start being like, okay, good. Now we're down to this, this number and now this number. Yeah. 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 (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, go on. If you keep like continuing on like doing something, you would know that eventually you would reach your goals. Yeah. So I, I kind of like that like being able to not do anything yeah and seeing other people doing it and that feel like really jealous so I kind of like have to do that okay so like a really really um healthy way of comparing yourself to other people because you look at them as something as a goal as something to be achieved that's Mm -hmm. amazing so speaking of that like uh, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting until you could do something so you, you came to Vegas about one one month ago right yes okay yeah tomorrow I, it was, I think a month yeah it was around yeah. my birthday last last month yeah. so I so but you've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this move for a long time haven't you so how did you deal with covid and coronavirus and keeping the and the quarantine and the shutdowns and you know being such a physical person and being with other people and being so young as well how did you deal with that and then what was the point where you thought now is the time to go to Vegas um so corona was really hard because I gained a bunch of weight right which is not good for your profession yes and so there was a lot of stuff going on in the studio as well and the teacher was like you have to lose some weight otherwise you can't you you, I won't let you climb the silks okay and that was kind of hard on me yeah you know it's locked down you can't do anything except eat (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. and I was moving at the time but like only like in the house the old yoga studio and yeah. I couldn't even touch the silk so that was really frustrating for me mm. and since the studio has been open I've like been there almost every day train there but there's a limit in Japan because the circus isn't that big in Tokyo okay so 
my teacher's 61 and she has hurt her knee so she can't even climb so I've been doing all the assisting and stuff so I've been showing the students how you should wrap this yeah and like you know trick or like get instructions from her and then do the silk stuff so I've kind of like known all the Japanese movements if that makes sense so there was a limit and I was like mommy I really need to go to Vegas or somewhere because this is just not working for me and you know I can't move forward otherwise I'm just gonna you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you'd reached your edge the, the yeah. level of expertise and of course Vegas is so what, what's the what's the reason you chose Vegas I know you've told me this before but what's the reason you chose Vegas so Vegas is really 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 popular with circus yeah so there's a lot of circus shows there's a lot of studios you know there's a lot of like pros there so you get to learn new stuff really quickly and with a good environment yeah. because the students are massive, like, you know, like next level massive. Yeah. And, you know, that's really, really exciting and you get to learn new stuff. So when I get back to Japan, I would be able to like make a new act or like choreography or teach some other people new stuff so I want to come to Vegas that's amazing and it seems I can see that a teaching role is emerging for you here as well so I could see that into my future you know, my ballet teacher from when I was little she died this year and she was 102 so oh my goodness but she, so she was 60 when she was she was in her 60s when she was teaching us, right? So uh, the, it's even you know, teaching is something you can do into the future as well, isn't it? So I teach the little kids when I'm in Japan. Like, Amazing. And that's fun as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's a limit until like you kind of like you kind of reach the you know edge. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I first came here. Of course, of course. And so, of course, Vegas being such a big entertainment hub means that there's so many pros there, so many options, so many studios, and people are like performing at the highest, highest level, right? Mm. That's where the, I mean, it's where the really big, I mean, for singers, it's where the big singers go to do their, you know, their, um, uh, their performances their in-house residences, that's the word I was looking for. And it's where all the Cirque du Soleil goes off as well. Uh, just so amazing. So you've got this teacher role emerging and not only that, but this is something I find so, so smart about you. What else have you been studying? Um, I've been doing microblading. Okay. With uh, eyebrow tattooing. Wow. It's not really called, called microblading mm -hmm. and I wanted a second job because it's not always easy to get a circus job and then earn a lot of money. Yeah. So I decided to pursue my stuff into beauty stuff mm -hmm. because I do like, you know, doing my makeup and doing my eyelashes done, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I decided to do eyebrows because there was a lady in town that teached microblading and yeah that's going really well and I've done some uh, I've done like a few clients already so I think if I like promote myself more I would get a lot of you know customers so that would go well as well hopefully amazing, amazing. does it hurt no um so I bought anesthesia so like numbing cream yes so that won't hurt at all if you Ooh, that. maybe I'll get it done when you're back in Japan again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so microblading. So I love that that you've got this lovely um, thing on the side. It's just so so smart. It's so smart. Um, 
because yeah, and not only that, but be, when you're um, performing at this physical level as well, there's an age limit of how long you can do that as well, right? So it's always good to have that other thing in place on the side of that. And how are you enjoying Vegas and America? How are you adjusting culturally to that? Because you're Japanese, British, right? Yes. So, so a, yeah. First week, I was kind of homesick. Because I have no friends here and obviously I'm really like close with my mum so yeah that, and my boyfriend is in Japan so that was kind of like you know what do we do about the time difference and when are we calling each other you know all that kind of stuff but now I am getting used to all the you know training and how I want to how do you say it live in mm. this house because I am my friend's house yeah and he has me as well so they drive the kids to school and then he comes to pick me up and then I go to the studio and all that kind of stuff so it's kind of crazy but yes I am adjusting and that's going kind of I guess okay yeah it's kind of, and yeah there's a lot of Japanese people here, so it's not that lonely because I can speak Japanese here as well. Amazing. Yeah. What else? The, yeah, the time difference was quite hard. Yeah. But, like, but yeah, it's really fun. Getting used to it. I love that. I, you've just got such a, you've got such a, a sensible attitude to all this stuff. Like all of it just seems so sensible, like being a beginner, change understanding you don't like change um going for it all this newness like you said i'm adjusting that's such a like a mature and like really um smart thing to say you've learned a trade microblading so that you don't have to rely only on the Cirque Soleil um bodywork stuff and you know you've got your boyfriend and your mum over here in Japan where I am um and you can talk to them and you're working out the time difference and you said like you're working out how to be there and how to live there and what your life is like there and it's only been a month I just think there's a real there's such a dedication to you a dedication to what comes next a dedication to improving and to make things better it's really really remarkable to hear <laughs> thank you so this tattooing as well do you have any tattoos yes I have three I have two on my ribs uh, mm -hmm. I have two on my ribs and on my wrist I have a heart this is a matching one with my mum Oh. but yes and I did my eyebrows as well oh wow and what made you choose two butterflies for your ribs what was the choice for that is it just pretty or uh, I mean... to be honest I hate butterflies because you know it's kind of creepy I I do not enjoy butterflies flying near me but I do like looking at them from a far distance <laughs> <laughs> it was just a Pinterest thing I think do you okay. know what Pinterest is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what Pinterest is. So you saw the pictures on Pinterest yeah. and you thought they were beautiful. <laughs> it was just interesting. No deeper meaning to that. Just no. thought they were pretty. Oh, I love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. Okay, so just loved talking to you and catching up and finding out what the fuck happened next for you, <laughs> May. What an absolute treat. Um, and so I want to ask you my final question now, which is: there are many ways to lead a life. What does that mean to you? Um, for me, I would just say, do what you love. Because if you don't do what you love, you're just miserable. So, you know, <laughs> just do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> do what you love and do whatever the fuck you want. May, it's been an absolute treat catching up with you today and finding out what your real fairy tale looks like. Um, your Instagram, which is the place where you post every day about what's going on, is Cirque underscore May, and that is C-I-R-Q-U-E underscore May. And is that the place where you prefer people to kind of connect with you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Or I have a Twitter account, but I'm like renewing it so I can post some like videos on there. So I would just- What account, like sorry? 
Twitter account. So Twitter account, I, okay. I would put that on my Instagram bio so they can fly over there. Perfect, perfect. And I see, and there's a TikTok account here. Yes, my TikTok blew up from like this stupid video that I made. I have 15K, I think, followers. 15 <laughs> followers on TikTok. What was the video yeah. that made you, what was the video that made you uh, blow up? It's kind of rude. So I would okay. prefer like scroll down and look okay <laughs> and, uh, that's that's my next <laughs> distraction for the day I'm gonna go through your TikTok looking for this rude video love it all right so May it's been an absolute treat talking to you again your dedication your willingness to be a beginner your humility your absolute focus but also your confidence and ability and willingness to talk to us about just the the brilliance and your 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 joy in life it's so infectious I love talking to people from all different generations and backgrounds and this is why like I'm taking away that kind of dedication and discipline if I want anything to change with my body it has to be repeated and it has to be with dedication and discipline and that's really helped me to kind of understand some of my next steps today as well May so thank you so much my May sensei and uh, <laughs> very best of luck in Vegas. So that's thank Cirque you. underscore May. Everybody go and give us some love and thank you so much. I thank believe you. there are many, many ways to lead a life and everybody has stories and I want to tell them and share them with everybody else. And um, this is the Legends series with Sarah Faruya coaching. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.